Good afternoon and welcome to this wonderful groundbreaking event for the Whittier Bridge project. I'm Mayor Donna Holiday from Newburyport and will be your MC for our short program this afternoon and thank you all for joining us. I'd like to take a minute just to recognize some of the other dignitaries who are in the audience. Uh, a former mayor who also works for MassDOT, Mary Carrier, welcome. Our City Council President from Newburyport, Tom O'Brien. City Councilor Barry Connell from Newburyport. Uh, would also like to recognize former selectman, but also now moderator in Salisbury, who was instrumental in working with our group with MassDOT, Jerry Clymer. And also two additional selectmen from Salisbury, Henry Rickenberg and Fred Knowles. Thank you for joining us. It has been a long several years of planning and work with MassDOT to reach this day today. One of the things that I think our communities are very excited about was when this project first began. Salisbury, Amesbury, and Newburyport came together and asked if we could form the Whittier Bridge Working Group. This began a partnership with MassDOT and their consultants that worked collaboratively on the numerous preliminary design issues, permitting issues that were required for this massive project. But I think the thing that we are most proud of is our advocacy for the first bridge in Massachusetts that will have a shared use path. This was important to our three communities because we've been working for many years on our rail trails. They're beautiful, we're reaching final stages, part two of Newbury Ports is well underway, will be completed in two years, but we had no way of connecting them across the river. So this was a wonderful, wonderful asset to this design and we are so pleased that MassDOT saw this as an important component to this bridge for our community. The Whittier Bridge was built in 1951 to honor John uh, Whittier Greenleaf, who was a great poet and abolitionist in our area. And after all these years, this bridge is finally in need of repair and replacement. So I am going to turn this over to Congressman Tierney first, and then uh, members of uh, Mass DOT, particularly Secretary Davey and other members here will give you a little more details about this comprehensive bridge project. So please, let's give a warm welcome to our wonderful Congressman, John Tierney. Well, thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. It's nice to join all of my colleagues in public service here and many in the audience and folks here. You can tell the people in the suits will not be doing the work, the people in the vest will be doing the work, right? on that, but I want to congratulate everybody. The artist renderings uh, show it's really an imaginative product here, and I think we're all going to be so pleased when it's done, but the whole planning and process of how it's going to be done uh, is just as interesting, and we really think a lot of care and attention has gone in to the communities working together with the state, making sure that everything is planned and, and planned well. So I'm pleased to be able to join you here today for this groundbreaking, what I think is a really uh, interesting and much anticipated project the kind of cooperative effort that talks about the engineering challenge, about the need to have safe transportation, about the need to make sure that our economy thrives, that we can have good commercial activity between communities in a way that makes sense, uh, whether it's tourism or there's actual other types of business going on, it's all very, very important, but also the way of having our quality of life, of people being actually able to get from community to community uh, when they need to in a very convenient way, and the aspect of having a shared use uh, just adds to that concept on that. I think everybody's proud of it. I frankly was surprised when we opened the bike path 
uh, here in Newburyport a while back and saw the, crowd, the showing, the crowd that came out for that and the enthusiasm to how very important it is and how recognized it is. You know, across the state and across the country, uh, people want to make sure that their infrastructure is robust and that it's safe and that it's updated. We have a lot of controversy down in Washington. We have a lot of people that are more than what you might call austerity hawks who think that they don't want to spend any money, they don't want to bring our infrastructure up and make it safe, they don't want to invest in America or invest in its future. And when you look at the budget that was passed, particularly in the House of Representatives, you see a sort of a retreat from all of those things. But we may have some hope out there because when you look at what happened when we brought up the transportation, housing and urban development bill, and people saw the effects of that austerity and the deep cuts and what it would mean in their communities, they weren't able to move forward. Because I think they go home, as all of us up here do, to our selectmen, to our town managers, to our mayors, uh, to our people in the city council, and to people in the state, and realize how important it is to our way of life to make sure that we don't have all of this falling in disrepair. That we can be competitive from state to state and with other countries as well. And so we're going to have to make sure that we have a real balanced way of stabilizing our economy, but one that allows for us to invest in America and invest in our future. This is a great example of one that all economists would get behind and tell us how important it is to invest. And that's why it's great to have 80% of this money at least coming from the federal government as a partnership with the state on the balance of that and the great local activity that you've had. We in this area understand it's important to have safety. It's important to be able to get back and forth for our commerce as well as for our social lives. But just as important is put 400 people to work in direct jobs and 1,000 people to work in indirect jobs. This is a time we need this in this community. We should all be proud to stand here and say that's how we're moving forward here. And I'm really glad to see this project get moving and look forward to the day when it opens up on completion. Thank you all very, very much. Mayor, thank you. Thank you, Congressman. And again, that partnership with the federal and state government was critical to this project. So we really appreciate you being here today. I also just wanted to take a minute to recognize Neil Harrington, town administrator from Salisbury, and Dennis DiZaglio, who is the executive director of the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, who were also really key members of our Whittier Bridge Working Group. So thank you. And next. I can't say enough about Secretary Richard Davies. Say whatever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> as much as you'd like. He has been such a tremendous friend to Newburyport and the greater Merrimack Valley area, working with us on so many projects, the Heinz Bridge, the small bottleneck bill for our roundabout, you know, really understands all of the infrastructure issues that we face uh, as communities and took a tremendous leadership role in working with the governor on promoting the transportation bond bill and the infrastructure needs uh, that are critical to our state. So please give a warm welcome to Secretary Davey. Thank you, Thank you Mayor. I appreciate that. Um, so on behalf of Governor Patrick, who enables me uh, to do this work, who's been a terrific boss and a huge supporter of transportation across the Commonwealth, uh, thank you for all uh, for being here today. Uh, I first want to acknowledge my 80% friends. Uh, this is an 80-20 project, as we say, in uh, federal and state parlance, which means the federal government is bringing 80% of the resources to bring this almost $300 million project, one of the largest that we will have in the state uh, going. First to President Obama. He actually knows where this bridge is. He does. The president two years ago, with the congressman's help and others, uh, picked 14 bridges across the United States as fast-track bridges to get people to work, to get the permitting going. As some of you have probably seen, permitting can be long and tedious. Uh, but he said to his federal partners, get it done. And with the partnership with Pam Stevenson from Federal Highway and some of her colleagues in government, uh, we were able to fast-track this bridge and get it done or get it moving. Uh, a year ahead of what it would have been had it not been in the president's dashboard. So to President Obama, we're very thankful. To the Congressman Tierney, to Senators Warren, Cowan before, and now Ed Markey for getting the dollars uh, to go and get this project done. And he's fighting down in Washington for so many other projects. As he said, look, there's no such thing as a Democratic or Republican pothole, near as I can tell, having spent a lot of time across the state. People want us to fix things. And with his fight down in Washington, he's helping us enable to do that here in Massachusetts. This is part of the Accelerated Bridge Program, which Governor Patrick and Lieutenant Governor Murray passed in 2007 with Chairman Costello's help. 
and Steve Bedore self. I love saying ex-Senator Steve Bedore, by the way. Can, let me say it with me. No, I'm kidding. I'm totally... <laughs> um, and Senator um, O'Connor Ives has also been, in her short time in the Senate, been an advocate, a strong advocate for transportation. We've met a number of occasions already. Uh, these are about partnerships. We don't get projects like this off the ground, nor are we going to get this project completed on time and on budget. Uh, without our partners in government and also the private sector too. As the congressman said, the men and women in these hard hats and up on the bridge are going to be getting this work done safely and on time. So in appreciation of that, thank you for the work that you're going to do over the next couple of years. Finally, I want to make a point. Um, you know, we just had a long, and dis uh, a long discussion about transportation finance in the Commonwealth. And the good news is we're going to move forward and get a lot done. We are only able to get it done if we make investments in ourselves. The governor has been clear about that. And folks, when you are tempted to talk about those investments, think about this $300 million bridge. It doesn't grow on trees. The resources to get these things done do not grow on trees. My grandfather, your parents, whomever, gave us these assets, this 1951 bridge that wasn't going to stand forever. It is our responsibility in this time to continue to invest in each other and ourselves. So thank you for being here. I look forward to coming back as a private citizen, <laughs> private citizen mayor to clip the, uh, the ribbon uh, in a couple of years from now. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Secretary Davey. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our MassDOT Highway Administrator, Frank DePaula, who will give us a little more details about the bridge project. Frank? Welcome. Thank you everyone and good morning. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I want to acknowledge the hard work of everybody who was involved in this project getting us to this point. And I also want to challenge our DOT team and contracting team to continue that level of excellence through, com through successful completion of this project. Uh, when this project is complete, uh, I-95 will be four lanes in each direction, removing a chronic bottleneck along this very a congested and heavily traveled corridor. As stated many times, it'll also have the first in the nation mixed use path on a interstate uh, highway and bridge, uh, which is an excellent accomplishment. The other thing is I think in the progress of this bridge, people, I hope, in fact, I was questioned yesterday, uh, we will build the first phase of this project offline with very little disruption to traffic. And when we have the first bridge done, we will change the traffic of 95 over to the new bridge tear down and replace the second bridge and when we're done we'll have four full lanes in each direction minimizing any disruption to the traveling public to the uh, smallest extent possible and uh, resulting in a brand new facility that will last well over 75 years and serve the uh, state of Massachusetts and the nation well going forward. So with that thank you and let's get to work. Thank you, Frank. I uh, just wanted to also acknowledge that we have recently had some very positive meetings with Walsh McCourt, and I anticipate who are the contractors for this design-build project, and I anticipate that we will continue to have uh, very positive communication going forward for the community as this project unfolds. It is also a pleasure to have members of the Federal Highway with us here today. And I'd like to introduce our division administrator, Pamela Stephenson. Thank you very much. Thank you. What a glorious day to celebrate this bridge opening. Uh, I'm going to echo a lot of what you've heard already. Everyone knows that any job to get it done requires partnership. And this is really a partnership among all of us, federal, state, local, and this is how we do it. So we need these kinds of projects. We need them, the replacement of the Whittier Bridge, to keep investing in our economy, in our aging in infrastructure. And as was mentioned by Secretary Davey, we are not the only ones in Massachusetts and New Hampshire that knows about this project. It was selected by the White House in October of 2011, and we were given a charge that we were to go out and expedite the review and the environmental phase and the permitting of the project to get it done faster so the work could begin faster. And we did that with our federal partners, the Army Corps, who I believe is here today, as well as our federal, federal highway, MassDOT, U.S. Coast Guard. We did it, and we did it in record time. 
So a year ago in this month, we had the permits and environmental phases in place. It was really a model. Now, we are still being tracked by the White House. We are? Yes, we are. <laughs> and we are still open <laughs> to the, uh, yeah, you think it's open. <laughs> and I still give reports on how we will be continuing and implementing those permits and how we'll be continuing with the progress on this construction. And everyone is waiting to see if we can finish on time, which I am assured we can. So if you look at it this way, the Whittier Bridge is a national model. It's going to be a national model, not only environmental streamlining, but also on the innovation that's being used in the contracting and the construction. So you have a lot to be proud of. And I also want to echo what has been said before. I really look forward to coming back in three years or less to cut the ribbon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie, and to all your staff who are here with you today. Next, you heard Secretary Davey mention ex-Senator Bedore, who was uh, very helpful with us as we started this process and began our uh, advocacy for the shared use path. But now we have a new senator representing our district, and it seems like she's been here a really long time because she hasn't missed a beat. And we are really, really thrilled that she represents our district. Would you please welcome Senator Kathleen O'Connor Ives. Thank you, Mayor Holliday. It's, um, it's a real special honor to be a part of today. Senator Bedore was involved at the beginning of this process, but I'm very excited for this opportunity for a ribbon cutting. I was just standing here reflecting on the fact that when I was a child and we would go to Salisbury Beach, we would drive across that bridge and I would look to my right and muse about that really special place over there to the right, to the uh, section of the Chain Bridge and the now Derek Hines Memorial Bridge. And we're now at the point where we recognize recognize that we want to improve public safety and replace this bridge. We want to make it more convenient and ease congestion and that bottleneck will be addressed. And it's really a symbol of investing in infrastructure that will lead to improved tourism and will assist folks coming and going to work and to school and to be a real positive example of investment. I'm also really excited about the fact that I'm very confident that MassDOT is truly committed to expediting this entire process through the permitting phase and also through the strategic engineering and design of this project. And I know that both the selectmen, the councilors, mayors and managers, Representative Costello and myself will all be here to continue that partnership and assist as needed so that we can be resources. It will be very interesting as this project actually unfolds and um, you'll see that constant dedication and commitment to troubleshooting that I've already seen underway so that we can be here to celebrate the completion of this project. And um, like everything else that um, is this complex, it's a true team effort and I'm very honored to be a part of it today. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Ives. And now our, our state representative who has been with us for many years, advocating for so many projects, uh, capital needs, infrastructure needs, and this one also was at our side from the minute we had heard about this project. Mike Costello was here with us, uh, helping us advocate for the things we needed and working with us at every Whittier Group meeting. Would you please welcome our wonderful, supportive representative, Michael Costello. Thank you, Mayor. I thought you were going to name the bridge after me. <laughs> um, it is a pleasure to be here. And, uh, you know, the facts, you've heard them. Uh, but really, uh, the personal stories behind this project are immense. Um, the people that came up and designed it, John Tierney, um, you know, in, in the federal uh, government, they're, they're 80 percent contribution. When people talk about the cost and, uh, you know, what's the cost of not doing it is the answer. And uh, this is an, a vital link, as you've heard, economically, for tourism, for families. Uh, and it really was important to get this on the uh, radar and it got on the, the highest radar, the president's radar. 
MassDOT, MassDOT has been a partner with us in this region, a tremendous partner. Patty, I see Mark, I see, uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, talk about Mike O'Dowd, Joe Pavo, Stephanie Boundy, uh, the District 14, Patty, who's now the Chief Engineer, and Paul Stedman, um, and Larry Glazebrook, who's, I, th I saw Larry's over here. But, you know, we know, not only do they represent us and help us, we know them personally. They have been, when, when, whether it's the rotary out front that you drove through that they paid for, whether it's the two bridges you came over uh, uh, that they were involved with, Mass DOT has been tremendous. So to the secretary, you know, he's put together a wonderful group. This is about, you know, half the time when you, when you cut a ribbon, you, it's a lot of back slapping, but it's not insincere. It's very sincere. Secretary Davies has taken DOT to the next level. He started and embarked last year. He was in Salisbury talking about having to bring in necessary funds so that we can move forward. And Secretary Davies has taken it to the next level, and we've benefited. Every bridge in our district has been fixed or redone. This will be the final and greatest bridge to be redone in our district. And what a backdrop. No greater backdrop. And as the senator says, I don't think anyone who drives through our towns uh, that we know from Boston or south of Boston will say, oh, when you drive over that bridge, there's no better vista to the right-hand side than Deer Island. And then let's look at the the people that have been involved on a local level, whether it was meetings in our office with homeowners who had noise issues, whether it was people who wanted to make sure that my mother's on an interpretive panel. They're talking about what type of panels they're going to have on the uh, uh, shared path, along with many of you. But every detail has been driven down at the local level. So it's an immense project. It's a difficult project, and I'm so pleased with the way the progress has been made. And uh, look forward to being back here in 2016 and cutting a ribbon, and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Michael. And last on our guest speaking list is my friend, my partner, uh, the mayor of Amesbury. But I'm very grateful to uh, Mayor Kieser because as we pulled together this Whittier Bridge Working Group, I couldn't stand the color that people wanted. It was this rust color, and you know we had to come up, uh, make a decision, and he sided with me, and we got the blue we wanted. So, my partner, my buddy, across the river, Mayor Thatcher Kieser. Thank you. Obviously, the color is the most important component of the whole project. Um, uh, well, one thing I'd like to say is, you know, this project brings a lot of benefits and in regard to the color choice, I got to be the, the tiebreaker for selecting the color, but also it's, it's helped me in a lot in that when I uh, report to the generals I worked for at National Guard, at the uh, Air, Air National Guard I worked for, and I tell them that I was able to make the decision on the color of the bridge and they ask me, well, what color did you choose? And I always respond, Air Force Blue, of course. <laughs> So I want to thank uh, Federal Highway and Mass Dot for helping to enhance my military career by having that opportunity. <clears throat> um, you know, everyone up here talked about partnership, and I think that that's one of the most important things of doing a very large project like this. It is about the partnerships at all level, the federal level, the state level, local level, really working together. Uh, Neil Harrington and Mayor Holiday and I having the opportunity <clears throat> to represent our communities as a task force to deal with the local impact issues and to have the opportunity to be heard and to have input. Uh, we very much appreciate that, that level of partnership. And I think what also um, doesn't get recognized enough in the public is, and, and I see this in a, in a lot of things that we try to do, as this project moves forward, the bridge, uh, the, 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 the bridge construction people, they had a problem with this whole project, and that was in order to maintain all the, the traffic during construction, that after the road project, the bridge project was all completed, they had a problem. They had an extra lane. What are we going to do with it? And at the same time, at the local level, we had a problem. We have all these bike trails and paths and community initiat initiatives to get people out, be healthy, you know, do all these wonderful things. We had a problem getting over the Merrimack River, and it is, I think, um, undercounted in the public of the opportunities where we say, let's take a problem we have over here, 
and a problem we have over here and when we connect the two problems we create solutions and so that's a, a big part of the partnership that's going on with the federal state and local level is that we were able to work together and these big problems that that we had as we try to achieve our objectives that we can combine them together work together communicate together and we create solutions doing that so i once again on the theme of partnership uh... thank all those from the federal state and local level for their efforts on this so thank you thank you mayor keezer and now i invite all of our officials over to grab a shovel <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Ready?